So no, we did, uh, we, you know we're finished up the first uh, part of the session now, and uh, I think we've had an incredibly uh, productive session thus far, passing a tax cuts for a million Minnesotans, uh, expanding the minimum wage for 350,000 Minnesotans, uh, passing the, the Safe School Safe and Supportive Schools Act, the bullying bill uh, that's going to protect you know tens of thousands of Minnesota kids uh, from uh, allowing them to be able to learn in their in their schools. Uh, and the House has already moved on the Women's Economic Security Act, which uh, we also think is hand in hand with the minimum wage increase to increase economic security for all Minnesotans. Uh, we passed a second tax bill with significant additional property tax relief uh, and a supplemental budget that we think makes the right investments for Minnesota in our schools and in fixing potholes uh, and in broadband. And so we're uh, really pleased with where we are. I think we have a lot to talk about when people get back to their districts uh, over this next week. Uh, and then when we come back, look forward to uh, continue to move as efficiently as possible to, to uh, wrap things up for the people of Minnesota. So, when you get back from break, what, what are the la rest of the legislation? First of all, when, when do you think you'll adjourn? Secondly, what, what things... What are your priorities the rest of the year? You know, we have a constitutional adjournment date of May 19th. Okay. And, and I ask, so when do you think you'll adjourn? It'll be, uh, it'll be by then or before. <laughs> um, and um, uh, so, I mean, what we have left is, you know, really, we have to we have a bonding bill we continue to need to put together uh, and finish that up and then get this uh, tax bill and our supplemental budget wrapped up. I mean, those are the, the biggest pieces of business we have left. And one of the things that... And, uh, and, oh. Well, and you know, we would like we we think the Women's Economic Security Act is a piece that needs to be done. And one of the things that um, is discussed a lot here is medical marijuana. Uh, it was their fault. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Okay. It's <laughs> okay. That's how Bill Warren is. Um, do you? Are you? There's a lot of discussion here and there whether you would even let medical marijuana come up, and you're trying to find ways to keep it from coming up. No, we are trying to find ways to come to a solution that uh, that's going to serve uh, the humanitarian interest. I think people have, have expressed, while at the same time reflecting, uh, you know, the efficacy and public safety concerns that others have raised. And you know, I think we have a chance over the over the break to kind of continue to have those conversations and see where we can end up. So you want to negotiate over the break on different things? Well, try to learn more information and see if there is a place that we can land. Yeah. Uh, and not just that, but other other issues. Oh, I guess, is, is it a working I, break? I, I for think you? for yeah, for for Aaron and I, and I mean for Aaron and I here at the Capitol, there, it'll be a uh, a working a working break where we can you know talk about what that budget might look like. And for our members, it's going to be a working break getting out and talking to their constituents. And I think you know uh, both the speaker and I are going to spend some time uh, out on the road as well over the break. Uh, connecting both with their members and with their constituents, talking about what we've accomplished thus far, getting feedback from them, and I think, you know, looking forward to the weeks ahead. So, uh, you know, when we get back, we're going to be talking about uh, the bonding bill, and we'll certainly be talking about that in the break as well. Senator Box said that there are four main issues. I may have missed this, but his four were budget, bonding, taxes, and uh, women's economic equality. Are those your four, too? That sounds like it lines up pretty well, okay. yes. Yep. Are you planning on talking with the Senate leaders during the break on, on these issues or others? Oh, I imagine we will have conversations with the Senate leaders and the administration over the break. What do you think the major obstacles will be after the break? Is the bonding bill a big one? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's any obstacles, but I mean, there's just we have to sort out the bonding bill and how that relates to the budget. Uh, and I think that we'll be able to make some relatively uh, smooth progress on those things. Will bonding bill definitely include 126 million for this building, for the renovation? Will it? Uh, uh, we're gonna. There will. There will be money to renovate this building in the in the, in the bonding bill, and more than is in the current house bond. The full 126, or is I don't. I don't know the exact details of, of that. Alice would know more about that. How about Vermilion State Park? So, uh, you know, we have a lot of discussions <laughs> we have to have around the bond. <laughs> Discussions around the bonding bill. Senator Box said that uh, Senator Han offered some consideration on the bonding bill if they would do something on the bullying bill, and Senator uh, Representative Doubt would offer some consideration on the bonding bill if they would do something on minimum wage. Have they talked to you? Had they talked to the two about this? We've had discussions about. Uh, uh, the resolution. You know, my, my sense is that the Republicans actually want a bigger bonding bill, and many of their members want a bigger bonding bill. And you know, are there ways that we can uh, 
get to that, you know, clearly there's we've had those discussions. Please answer a question, though. Did, did the Republicans, especially doubt, talk to you about we'll give you a bigger bonding bill if you reduce or you cut back on the bullying bill? Minimum wage. Well, I've heard both. Okay. I've heard both, I guess. Rep Representative, I mean, Representative Doubt has mentioned the minimum wage, but we think the minimum wage bill that we passed today uh, is going to help, uh, you know, 350,000 Minnesotans. So that was not a piece that we, we put as part of the consideration. Yeah, I heard a Republican tell me today about what that happened with the bullying uh, bill, not just minimum wage. So there's a discussion. We'll, we'll give you a bipartisan bill uh, on bullying, which basically lower, not as strong as what you passed. We never had a discussion about a, a bullying bill that would be less than what we passed in exchange for the bonding bill. Sorry, I forgot here late. If the rest of you have answered your questions. What do you consider your most your major accomplishments so far? Uh, passing tax cuts for a million Minnesotans, uh, middle class Minnesotans. Um, passing a minimum wage that's going to help 350,000 Minnesotans take care of their families uh, and themselves and uh, the passing the bowling bill uh, that's going to you know, protect lots and lots of students in schools all across the state of Minnesota, allowing them to actually learn while they're in school, uh, those things. And then I think passing the, the Women's Economic Security Act off the House floor with a very strong bipartisan vote uh, is a big accomplishment. And I, uh, one other thing that I think is an accomplishment this year is the fact that just about every piece of major legislation that we've passed this year has had very strong bipartisan support, maybe well, with the exception of the minimum wage, even the budget. Uh, the amendment that the Republicans offered was more than two thirds, you know, probably almost three quarters of the budget that we ended up passing. They voted for on their amendment. Uh, so I think of almost $950 million of the $1.2 billion surplus that we're dealing with this year, the Republicans have already agreed with us that those are the right priorities. And you agreed with the four priorities that you'll face when you get back. That that? Senator, you, you said you agree pretty much with Senator Box's four priorities when you get back. Is there anything else you'd add to that list? I mean, not, not, in, not in particular. I think those are the, the right four things that we need to talk about. Besides those priorities and the other conference committees, do you expect a, most of these little bills, they're not little to the legislators who carry them, but do you expect a lot of the other bills to be coming up? Or you, in other words, are you going to be busy debating bills all the time, or are you going to be waiting for conference committees? And I think that there are a number of bills yet on the general register, and we'll try and move those that we can get through. Uh, uh, before the May 19th adjournment so that we can get that work done. And members generally like to be busy while they're here, so yeah, I think there'll be members in conference and there'll be members here working on the floor. Are there to get out here before May 19th? <laughs> May 19th is the constitutional deadline, so it could be that date, it could be before, but by, by, by May 19th for sure. Are there some sleeper bills out there that we might not have reported about that, that you two know about that may be surprised, may be bigger than... We realize none that come to mind right now. I'll think about it over the break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are you on campaign finance? Uh, we're where still having where, where we have been all along. Yes. So. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank have you. a good thank break. You. Good you too. Yes. Yeah.